Praise the Lord and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is a broadcast of Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ located in Houston, Texas. Elder James Eugene Manuel is the pastor and general overseer. Prepare your hearts to receive a word from God as Elder James Eugene Manuel minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have to live a holy and a sanctified life. Praise God. Because God requires holiness. Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, <clears throat> it says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Amen. So there's no way, amen, you're going to be saved, amen, without following holiness. Amen, in Jesus' name. So, amen. So we thank the Lord, amen, for those of you, amen, who have pressed your way out, amen, and for those of you who are tuning in through the internet, <clears throat> amen, outlets that we have, amen, praise God, <clears throat> whether it's through our website or through the live stream or through the other, amen, outlets, uh, outreach, amen, <clears throat> channels that we have out here. Amen. In Jesus' name, we thank God for you tuning in. Amen. So, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, <clears throat> this is the Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ. We are located, amen, on the west end, or some may call it the, the northwest corner of Houston. Amen. And the address is 4204 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas, 77084. And the current schedule is Sundays at 10 a.m., amen, Central Standard Time. So, amen, we thank God for, amen, all of you in Jesus' name. And we thank God and praise the Lord. And uh, yes, so that's our service address, amen, 4204 Highway 6, North Houston, Texas, 77084, amen. But our mailing address is P.O. Box 15812, Houston, Texas, 77220. Once again, that's P.O. Box 15812, Houston, Texas, 77220. Amen in Jesus' name. So if you have any, amen, requests or inquiries, amen, prayer requests, amen. Of course, you can give us a call as well or email us, amen, 832-360-5812. That's 832-360-5812. That's, amen, our phone number, amen, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> And so we thank God, amen, for holiness, amen. We thank God for Jesus Christ, amen, because he is, amen, holy, amen. Holiness started with him, amen. Praise God, hallelujah, and it shall remain with him, amen. Because the Bible says that God is without beginning of days nor the end of life, amen. <clears throat> so no one created God, amen. God has always existed, amen. So Jesus Christ has always existed because John chapter 1, amen, it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Amen. It says, All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Amen. Then it goes on, amen, on that chapter, amen, the gospel according to St. John chapter 1. It says, he, speaking of Jesus Christ, was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Amen. So the creator of God was in the world that he created, amen. The world was made or created by him, amen, and the world didn't know who he was, amen. And then it goes on to say that he came into his own. And his own receiving now. So he came into the Jewish people, amen, that nation of Israel that he, amen, chosen, amen, praise God, to put his name, amen, to be a representation, amen, of holiness, amen, amen, back in the law of Moses, praise God. He said he came into his own and his own receiving now. And most of the Jews rejected him, amen. That's the Messiah, amen, of course, and most of them even today reject Jesus Christ as being the Messiah, amen. Still claiming to be waiting on the Messiah, but amen, that Messiah came and went. Amen. But praise God, they're they going to realize, amen, when he comes back again, amen, that Jesus is the Messiah.
Messiah, because the Bible says that they shall look on me whom they have pierced and shall be well because of him. Amen. They're going to see the nail prints in the hands and everything. Say, oh, man. Amen. But of course, we're not at that time yet. But he said, came unto his own, and his own received him not. Amen. So most of the Jews rejected him. But he said, but as many as received him, amen, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. So we know Jesus is the name. Amen. That's why we believe in water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, because the Bible teaches water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't teach, amen, being dunked in the water in the titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, religion, amen, slave master teaching, amen, that came out of Europe, amen, started, amen, in Roman Catholicism, then handed down to Protestantism. Yeah, you're going to get that, amen. Because they don't, they wasn't sent by God, amen. They don't have the Holy Ghost, amen. God didn't send them, amen. The devil, amen, is their master. The devil is their God. That's why they're out there preaching and teaching those lies, amen. And we can go into the word, amen, to further prove our point, amen, that no one, amen, was baptized in titles of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because Father is not a name, amen. And many of us with enough Amen. Scholastic sense knows that. Amen. Father is not a name. You can, amen, you know, write father on your check, say you get your paycheck or someone write your personal check. Amen. You write father on that check, amen, and go to the bank or somewhere to cash it. You really think they're going to cash your check in and say, father? Amen. They're going to say, well, what's your name? They're going to say, well, I'm father, you know. I'm a son, too. You can write that too. Write Father, Son, and Holy Ghost on that check. See if, see if they're going to cash it for you. Amen. You say, yeah, I'm a father, I'm a son, and I have the Holy Ghost. They're going to say, well, we understand that, but what's your name? We need your name on the check. Amen. So we know that that doesn't make sense. Amen. Father is not a name. Amen. Father is a title. Son is not a name. Son is just a title. Holy Ghost is not a name. Holy Ghost is just a title. Amen. So we can go, amen, into Matthew chapter 28. And we'll just start off with Matthew chapter 28. Amen. In Jesus' name, to further prove our point, amen. For the saints that know the word, bear with us, amen. In Jesus' name, because uh, we got people that, amen, may be hearing this for the first time. And right now we're just checking to make sure that we're still rolling. Yeah, if we look so, we're still rolling, so thank you all for that. Technology isn't perfect. <clears throat> Amen. We had issues last week when we were in Fort Worth. Amen. So we didn't quite jot down the broadcast. Amen. Or our poverty, rather. <clears throat> so if you wasn't tuning in, Amen. Why was you going live? Then you just missed it. Amen. The only part that did archive was the was part of the Amen praise service. <clears throat> Amen. So Matthew chapter 28. And we'll start at verse 18. Amen. As a matter of fact, I'll start at verse 17. So Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 17. And when they saw him, amen, when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him. Amen. Keep in mind, you're not supposed to worship no one but God. Amen. The Bible says, amen, that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shall God serve. So if Jesus was not God, what they were doing at this very point in the moment was committing idolatry. Yeah. Amen. And the Bible says that no idolater has inheritance in the kingdom of God. So a person that's, amen, worshiping a false god, worshiping an idol, amen, is something other than God, amen, they're not going to heaven, amen, if they die in their sin of idolatry. Amen. But now they, they worship Jesus because Jesus, amen, is God. Jesus was, uh, is the image of the invisible God. He was that visible image, amen. So they wasn't committing idolatry, amen. They were worshiping God, amen, because Jesus is God. So and when they saw him, they worshiped him. And this was after his, amen, death, burial, and resurrection. And then it says, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, 
All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now he make a statement that even further proves the point that he is the almighty God. Amen. Because if Jesus was not God, amen, he shouldn't have said that he has all power both in heaven and in earth. The Bible says that heaven is God's throne and the earth is his footstool. So now, now first he received worship. His disciples worshiped him, amen, as God, amen, because God is the the Almighty, the only one that should be receiving worship. Amen. And then he goes on to say, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So now he just made the claim that he is God. Amen. Because heaven is God's throne, the earth is his footstool. Amen. The Bible says that the clouds are the dust of his feet. So if Jesus is not God, and he made that statement, and the Bible says that he didn't sin not one time, neither was God found in his mouth. Amen. That means if he wasn't God, then that means God don't have power no more. Amen. Because Jesus claimed to have it all. I mean, a, a so-called God the Father is now powerless, and a so-called God the Holy Spirit is now with no power. Because Jesus claimed to have all the power. Amen. Well, Jesus claimed to have all the power because Jesus is the true and living God, amen, that revealed or manifested himself in flesh, amen, or a human being body, amen. It's nothing too hard for God. If he made the heavens and the earth, amen, and all things therein, amen, praise God, hallelujah, do we think that it would be so hard for him to create a, a flesh and blood body for him to walk in and talk in, amen, and be amongst us, amen, his own creation? No, oh, it that, that's very, amen, minimal compared to everything else he made. Amen. So, he goes on to say, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth because Jesus is God. So now, verse 19, this is, well, false prophets and everyone else, amen, get twisted up. Amen and confused. Amen. Now, some of you, amen, you don't know because it's just the way you were brought up. Amen. I, I can testify. Amen. I was brought up Baptist. Amen. So I was taught that, hey, you have to be baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And that's what we're about to read. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Now, amen, dissect this scripture. He says specifically, in the name. See, N-A-M-E. So, name of the Father. And then he said, of the Son, name of the Son. So now we know the Father has a name. Amen. Because the term Father itself is not a name. It's just a title. Amen. Thank God I'm a father now. Amen. Amen. As of March the 15th of this year, amen, I'm now a father. But before that, I wasn't a father. Amen. So I couldn't make no claim, amen, to be, amen, a father, amen, before March the 15th, amen, of 2017. And then, of course, amen, I'm a son. Amen. But son is not my name. Father is not my name. Amen. And praise God. And of the Holy Ghost. Well, I thank God I have the Holy Ghost. Amen. Been filled with the Holy Ghost, or rather the Holy Ghost has me. Amen. As of April 26, 2005. But Holy Ghost is not my name. Amen. And if you have the Holy Ghost too, amen, Holy Ghost is not your name. Your name ain't been changed to Holy Ghost. Amen. Your name is the same as it was, amen, from... Amen. The time your parents named you, if you didn't change your name since you named yourself legally. Amen. So, now we understand that Father is not a name, Son is not a name, Holy Ghost is not a name. Those are only titles. Amen. He told them not to baptize in titles, he told them to baptize in the name. And then verse 20, he says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, yeah. and lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. Amen. So now let's find out, amen, what the name of the Father is. Amen. Now we just read, amen, a few verses that Jesus Christ is the true God. Amen. Ain't no two or three, ain't no trinity. Amen. <clears throat> amen. They, they worship Jesus, and then Jesus say, I got all power in heaven and in earth. Amen. You see that worship, then he made the claim that he is the almighty God. Amen. There's only one God. Amen. 
Children of Israel was told, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. Not three, not two. So now let's go into John, Gospel according to St. John, chapter 5. So John chapter 5. And so now we're going to see what the name of, of the Father is. Amen. So John chapter 5, beginning at verse 43. Of course, on your own time, you can read the entire chapter, amen, of John 5. Amen. Very good chapter. Amen. The whole word of God is good. Amen. But we just bring out a point. So verse 43, the gospel according to St. John, chapter 5. Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him he will receive. Amen. So Jesus claimed to come in the Father's name. Amen. So now we know that the name of the Father is Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus, praise God, you know, and ain't no one really going to argue with us about the name of the Son being Jesus Christ. Amen. Or being Jesus. Amen. But now you know that the name of the Father is Jesus. Because he just said in John 5, 40, John chapter 5, verse 43, he said, I am come. He said, he came in my Father's name. Amen. And Jesus was the name he came in. And then he said, you receive me not. Amen. So we got a lot of people that don't even receive water baptism in Jesus' name, even though Jesus came in the name of the Father. Amen. Jesus is the name of the Father. Amen. But he said, if another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Amen. And that's what most of the world is doing. They're receiving these false prophets. Amen. They got buildings. Amen. Church houses. Amen. With their name placed on it. Amen. They name on the billboard. Amen. They face, they picture on the billboard. Amen. That ain't nothing but pride and devilish, earthly, sensual, devilish foolishness. Amen. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> but hallelujah, we know that now the name of the Father is Jesus. So now, even though, amen, we all know that the name of the Son is Jesus, but we can see it for ourselves in the Word. Amen. Specifically, amen, the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 1. So Matthew chapter 1, and we'll start at verse 20. And then it says, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. But while he, speaking of Joseph, <clears throat> thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. Here we go, verse 21. So Matthew 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Amen. Then say thou shalt call his name Son. Amen. Like Trinitarians, amen, teaching dumb people, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Never use the name. Amen. If you was baptized that way, your baptism didn't mean nothing. Amen. Didn't mean nothing at all. It was a waste of time. It was a waste of water. Amen. A waste of your money, too. Amen. And you need to be baptized according, amen, to the scriptures. Amen. And Father's not a name. Son's not a name. Holy Ghost's not a name. Amen. If you were to die right now, Amen. Even if you claim that you have the Holy Ghost. Say, well, I receive the Holy Ghost. Well, if you do have the Holy Ghost, it's going to bear witness, amen, to the truth. Because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. So if you do have the Holy Ghost, like some of you claim to have it, amen, it's going to bear witness that water baptism in Jesus' name is essential, amen, to salvation. Because the Bible says that except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So if you do supposedly have the Holy Ghost and you never get baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, you ain't going to heaven. Amen. Not if you die. Amen. If you die without receiving the birth of water, amen, or being baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ, amen, you're going to lift up your eyes in hell. 
Amen. Because you need both water and spirit. You can't have one without the other. Same thing for someone who may claim to believe in water baptism in Jesus' name, but don't believe in receiving the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got some people like that. I tell you, they're going to lift up their eyes in the lake of fire if they never receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. So you need the birth of the water and of the spirit. Amen. And then, of course, amen, you're not going to receive the, amen, neither one right, amen, without repentance. Amen. Because repentance starts first. That's a death to sin. Amen. So now we still in Matthew 121. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So now we know that the name of the son is Jesus. Amen. We read earlier, amen, John chapter 5, verse 43, the name of the Father is Jesus. So now, amen, let's see what the name of the Holy Ghost is. Amen. Holy Ghost has a name. So that's uh, the Gospel according to St. John. So, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 14. So, John, chapter 14, verse 26. Now we're going to find out the name of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, Amen. So the Holy Ghost comes in the name of Jesus. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Read that again. John chapter 14 verse 26. But the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. So now, amen, the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Amen. So what does that take? Amen. You need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. In order to enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. Someone dunk you after reciting. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and splash you in the water. Amen. That was a waste of time. That baptism was not right. Amen. Because he never used the name of Jesus. Amen. And then if you were still practicing sin, you still was smoking and drinking and lying and cussing and fornicating, still had your girlfriend, boyfriend, still was a, amen, homosexual, lesbian, and they dumped you, amen, then that still was a waste of time. Amen. Your sin still hasn't been remitted. Amen. Because you were still in sin. Amen. You have to come out of sin. Amen. You have to repent of your sins. Amen. A voluntary act of turning away from the practice of evil ways. Amen. And not going back to it. Amen. Not know like the false prophets say, just do the best you can because God knows you can't help it. Amen. There ain't nowhere in this Bible, amen, that the Lord say that you can't help it and just do the best you can. Amen. That will tell you that, though. Amen. So you can keep, amen, walking in darkness. Amen. And end up with your soul lost. Amen. So now we know, amen, that the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus. So Matthew 28, 19, when he told them to baptize in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, he was telling them to baptize in Jesus' name. That's why, amen, the Apostle Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, on the day of Pentecost, Amen. He had the revelation. Amen. In Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> so now you can turn to Acts chapter 2 now. Amen. <clears throat> That's the next book after the Gospel according to St. John. Now some Bibles they may have it listed as the Acts of the Apostles. Amen. Or the book of Acts. So Acts chapter 2. And we begin at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak 
with other tongues as the Spirit gave their mother. So, amen. When you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, amen, you will speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the others. Amen. That's how one receives the gift of the, Holy, of the Holy Ghost. That's proof that you've been filled, amen, with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're going to speak in other tongues, not, you know, supposedly bowing your head and repeating some sinner's prayer and accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior and not a false prophet saying you, you've now been filled with the Spirit and you're an instant child of God. Amen. That's a lie from the devil. Amen. It's no way in this Bible that all you have to do is bow your head and repeat after some false prophet of sinner's prayer. Amen. Jesus didn't talk that. Amen. The apostles of Jesus Christ didn't talk that. Amen. No true man of God today will ever teach that. Amen. They taught repentance, water baptism, in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Ghost and living a holy life. Amen. Because God requires holiness, and holiness is about separation. Amen. Separation from sin. Amen. Separation, amen, from practicing sin. Separation from walking in darkness. Separation from being of your father, the devil. Amen. The Bible says that no man can serve two masters. Amen. He will either love one or hate the other. He either cleave to one or despise the other. So there's no way that one can serve both God and the devil. Amen. Like the saying goes, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Amen. Not when it comes to God. Amen. You either going to serve Jesus all the way or you're going to serve the devil all the way. Amen. There's no in between. Amen. There is no middle ground. There is no gray area. There is no straddling the fence in this world. You either saved or you're not. Amen. You either drawn closer to God or you're drawn further away from God and, and deep into sin and to the depths of hell and destruction. Amen. Either or. Because there's only two masters. Amen. It's either the Lord God Jesus Christ or Satan the Prince of Darkness. Amen. But it's your choice who you're going to serve. And amen. It's going to be up to you based on the choices you make and the way you die that's going to determine where your soul spends eternity. Amen. Whether it's in heaven, amen, in God's throne with the saints and the old patriarchs and matriarchs, amen, or in hell and then the lake of fire on judgment day with the devil and his angels. Amen. How you live on this side is going to determine where you spend eternity. Amen. After you die on this side. Amen. But the Bible says today when you hear God's voice, don't harden your heart. Amen. So, amen. Do yourself a favor and don't reject this word. We're still in Acts chapter 2. In verse 4 it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them others. Amen. So, capital S. Amen. That's the Holy Ghost giving the mothers. Amen. So not as the false prophet. Amen. Some of you may have been in churches or currently attending churches, but false prophet. Amen. Take you in the back room and, and, and tell you to repeat some mumbo jumbo after them. Or, amen. And then you repeat it and they say, oh, you got the Holy Ghost now. Amen. Or some of them don't take you in the back room. They be in the front of the sanctuary. Amen. Mumbling some mess and Amen. You repeat it and then, oh, you, they, they, you've been filled. Amen. You ain't been filled with the Holy Ghost. You're just doing assignment says. Amen. Amen. You're just repeating after what the false prophet said. Amen. Because if you receive the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in other tongues as the Holy Ghost, as the Spirit. Amen. Gives the other is as the Spirit of God takes control of the most unruly member of your body. Amen. Which is the tongue. When God takes control of the tongue, amen. Hallelujah and speak, amen, then that's when you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. In verse 5, Acts chapter 2, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So keep in mind the apostles of Jesus Christ, amen, and the other saints that was in that upper room had all been filled with the Holy Ghost, amen. They've filled, been endued with power from on high, amen, because Jesus told them to tarry at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high, amen. So they received that power from on high on the day of Pentecost, amen. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language, and they were all amazed 
and marvel, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue or language, where we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What mean of this? Others mock and say, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, amen, Peter was an apostle, amen, a true apostle. Amen. Got a lot of people saying they're apostles, amen, but they don't show the true signs of an apostle. Amen. amen. All they have is their mouth and a title. Amen. Not talking about the mouth title, told an apostle. Amen. <laughs> Peter was a true apostle. Amen. He had signs and wonders. Amen. And the works of God following him. Amen. So, but Peter, standing up with the eleven. Amen. So keep in mind, Peter was just filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. In that upper room on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, verse 4. Amen. Spoke in tongues, lifted up his voice, and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. In other words, listen up. Amen. Those of you that are in or near the Houston area, amen, or even if you're in another city or in another state, or even in another country, amen, amen, listen up, hearken to my words as well. Because this is for you too. He says, for these are not drunk and as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Amen. People don't get drunk that early. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and noble day of the Lord come, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then he goes on to say, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Amen. Because most of the Jews, they rejected Jesus as being the Messiah. Amen. They you know, was in that same crowd that was saying, crucify him, crucify him. Now they gathered together in Jerusalem. Amen. On the day of Pentecost. Amen. And Peter is preaching to some of those same people. Amen. That rejected Jesus. He says, verse 24, whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad, moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy ones to see corruption. <clears throat> Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, so King David, he was also a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his, speaking of Jesus, so was not left in hell. Yes, indeed, Jesus did with the hell. Amen. His soul went to hell. Of course, his body was buried in that tomb for three days and three nights. But him being God Almighty, amen, and we know that God is in heaven, amen, because God is omnipresent, amen. He can be everywhere at the same time. Amen. So even though Jesus Christ being God Almighty was on that cross, 
dying, amen, his body was, amen, but he was the Holy Ghost, amen, so he still was in heaven, amen, and he told that dying thief, amen, that repentant dying thief, amen, the, the thief had asked him, he said, Lord, remember me when thou enterest into thy kingdom, and then Jesus told that thief, he said, verily I say unto you, this day, today you shall be with me in paradise, but now we see in here, Acts 2 and 31, that Jesus' soul wasn't left in hell because Jesus, amen, he was both God and man. Amen. And, and man, praise God, man, male or female, amen, we have been created with a body, a soul, and a spirit. So even though Jesus Christ was God Almighty, amen, hallelujah, he was also a man, amen, because he made himself a body, amen, to inhabit. So Jesus also had a body, a soul, and a spirit of a man. And amen, when Jesus died, because he put upon himself the whole sins of the world, amen, hallelujah, when he died, amen, his soul went to hell, because that's where sinners go. Sinners go to hell when they die in their sins. Amen. So Jesus went to hell in our place. So that's why Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, was preaching on the day of Pentecost, verse 31, chapter 2. He seeing this before a spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption, so his body didn't rot or decay, being in that tomb for three days and three nights. This Jesus have God raised up. Well, we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the, of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he have shed forth this, which he now see and hear. Amen. The Holy Ghost is a promise. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said of himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So Jesus Christ, amen, Jesus was made both Lord, amen. The Bible says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he who have made us and not we ourselves. That's Psalms 100. Amen. It said, when ye have crucified both Lord and Christ, so, and the Messiah. So now here we go, verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Amen. In other words, they felt some conviction. Amen. They felt some guilt. So they realized they rejected, amen, their Messiah. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Amen. They didn't say, well, that ain't what my rev say. That ain't what my, amen, my bishop taught me growing up. Amen. That, that ain't what our church, our church teach. Amen. Or that, that's not part of, amen, our dogma. Amen. Praise God. They say, what shall we do? Amen. They want to get it right. Amen. So if you really want to be saved, amen, praise God, you, hallelujah, need to get it right. Amen. You should be wondering, what shall you do in order to be saved? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. In other words, turn from the practice of your evil ways. Amen. Repentance, the definition of it means to turn from the practice of sin. Amen. I have to repent. Amen. Praise God. I, I was shacking up. Amen. Had girlfriends drinking, smoking. Amen. Praise God. I had to stop that mess. Amen. Because that was sin. Amen. I had to turn from the practice of my sin. Had to give the girlfriend up. Praise God. I had to give up the mind, the stealing. Amen. The filthy communication, cussing coming out of my mouth. Amen. I had to repent of saying those demonic words. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And praise God. I had to seek the Lord. Amen. So, amen. You need to do the same thing. Amen. The Bible says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. Amen. You have to humble yourself. Amen. Because there ain't no such thing as a cussing Christian. I tell you right now. Amen. You ain't going to see no one or hear no one in heaven. Amen. Using that kind of foul language. Amen. Because it's not allowed up there. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Amen. If you're not going to get it right here, don't expect to go up there because you won't be going up there. Amen. You'll be going downhill. Amen. You're going to be burning in hell fire and in the lake of fire if you don't repent of your sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, praise God. I have to repent of my sins. Amen. 
Praise God. I had to give up all of what I was into. Amen. The pornography, everything. Amen. I had to truly repent. Amen. Threw that stuff out. Amen. The world and music. Amen. The rap and the R&B and the mess I was into. I had to throw that stuff away. Amen. That's what true repentance is about. Amen. Not saying, well, God, no, I can't help it. I'm just going to do the best I can and don't wallow. Amen. You don't see that nowhere in the Bible. Amen. But I grew up here in that mess in the Baptist church. Amen. The synagogue of Satan that I grew up in. Because that's really what it is. Amen. Now you may say, well, I'm Baptist born or Presbyterian or AME and all that. Amen. Those are no more than synagogues of Satan. Amen. Because the false prophet is not telling you what much you do to be saved. Amen. All he is giving you is religion. Amen. Or something that you want to hear to make you feel good, to give you a false sense that you're serving God, when in reality you're serving the devil. Amen. That's what false religion is all about. Amen. But if you truly want to be delivered, truly want to be saved and born again, you're going to have to come out of your false church. Amen. And into holiness. Amen. We still in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Because these are, amen, this is the salvation message or the salvation instructions. Amen. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord God, amen, that he came down from heaven to earth, amen, lived a holy life and healed the sick and raised the dead and done many wonderful works, amen, and changed lives of the people, amen, and he was Amen. Put the death crucified. Amen. He was buried and he rose again on the third day or after three days and three nights and went back up to heaven. Amen. If you believe that gospel message, amen, and you truly want to be saved, then this is, amen, the instructions that you must follow, amen, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent, amen, turn from your sins and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And we went over the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus is that name. Jesus is the name of the Father. Jesus is the name of the Son. Jesus is the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Once again, John chapter 5, verse 43, Jesus is the name of the Father. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, Jesus is the name of the Son. John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus is the name of the Holy Ghost. And so now Apostle Peter, full of the Holy Ghost here, on the day of Pentecost, just been filled, just received the promise of the Father, now telling them how they should be baptized. Amen. He said, every one of you, not just for them in that day, amen, but it applies to everyone that wants to come into the knowledge of the truth. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. Amen. That's the only way you're going to receive remission of your sins is through baptism in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the power is in the name. It's not no title. Amen. The power is in the name. Then it says, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's a promise because God, God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If God made you a promise, amen, he's going to keep his promise. And this is a promise in his word. For whoever, amen, believe the gospel and repent of their sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, God will fill them with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. After I repented of my sins and was baptized in Jesus' name, amen, the Holy Ghost came on me and I spoke in other tongues. Amen. As his spirit gave the others. Amen. Didn't have to make it up. No one else had to make it up. God took control. Amen. And he took control of every other brother and sister of the household of faith today. Amen. Who have came into this way of holiness. Amen. They received the Holy Ghost the right way. Amen. <clears throat> In verse 39 it says, For the promise is unto you and to your children. So there we go. Promise. Amen. God don't break promises. He do not break promises at all. Now, you may have so-called friends and loved ones, amen, that have made you a promise, amen, and never follow through with it, amen. you like, man, they straight up lied. They said they were going to do it. They even promised me, and they didn't do it. They lied to me. Well, you don't have to worry about God lying to you because God, he can't tell a lie, amen. The Bible says that God cannot tell a lie, amen, because every time God speaks, it comes to pass, amen. Every time he says something, it happens. Because his word has all power. 
Amen. That's why he let us have all the power that heaven and earth is given unto me. That's how he healed people. Amen. By speaking his word. Amen. That's how he raised up the dead by speaking his word because his word has power. That's how he created everything. Amen. Through his word. So when God makes a promise, it shall be kept. Amen. Because God is not a liar. Amen. But if the devil makes you a promise, oh yeah, it's going to be broken. Amen. Because the Bible says that the devil is a father of lies. Amen. But hallelujah. So the Holy Ghost is a promise. It says verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Amen. Jew and Gentile. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. In verse 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. Amen. They ain't say, Well, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No, they, 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 those who gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day that were added unto them about 3,000 souls, or so 3,000 people. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, amen. Received that word, amen. Repented of their sins, baptized water in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of their sins. God filled them with the Holy Ghost. They spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Hallelujah. They were glad about it. Amen. In verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in bread. Amen. So they didn't continue steadfastly in the Baptist doctrine or Protestant doctrine or Catholic doctrine. Amen. They continue steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine. Amen. That's what we believe here. Amen. That's why the name of the church here is called Apostolic. Amen. Because we believe in the Apostles' doctrine. Amen. And we believe in holiness. Amen. Because holiness is about separation. Amen. Holiness has been taught in the Old Covenant and in the New Covenant. Amen. Because God is holy. And he said, be ye therefore holy, for I, the Lord thy God, am holy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you have to be holy. Amen. You have to be clean. Amen. That's one, amen, simple definition of the word holy, to be clean. Amen. Clean habits. Amen. Clean dress code. Clean language. Amen. Clean lifestyle. Amen. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. That's once again, I tell you, that, that's the sign of a true apostle. If you sitting under someone that claims to be an apostle, amen, and he ain't working, God ain't using him, amen, with no signs, no wonders, Amen. He ain't doing the same thing that the apostles in this Bible is doing. I tell you, amen, he is not an apostle. I don't care how long he's been preaching, amen, how much revelation he supposedly have, amen, if he's not doing the same thing that these apostles in this Bible is doing, he is not an apostle if he's even of God at all. Amen. Amen. Because the word of God is right. Amen. You got too many people, amen, with a title in their mouth saying they're an apostle, but they don't got, amen, God working with them the same way that the apostles, amen, in the Holy Scriptures were being used of God. Amen. Now, the, the sad part about it, many of them, they just don't know they call it. Amen. If God truly sent them, amen, and, you know, they don't know they call it. They, they think they're an apostle, they say they're an apostle, but, amen, they're not an apostle. You might be a pastor, Amen. Or an evangelist or a teacher. Amen. Seek God and find out what your real calling is. Amen. If you are God at all. Amen. The fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house. They eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. So we thank the Lord. Amen. For this broadcast. Amen. For this service. In Jesus' name. Amen. So for those of you who are in or near the Houston, Texas area, or if you plan on visiting anytime soon or whenever, amen, you're more than welcome. 
to come down here. Amen. Praise God. And you will be received in Jesus' name. This is the Apostolic Holiness Church of Jesus Christ. We are located. Amen. The service address is 4204 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas, 77084. Amen. Phone number is 832-360-5812. Amen. The web address is ahcjc.com. That's ahcjc.com. Amen. And currently, amen, we're here Sundays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 15812, Houston, Texas, 77220. That's P.O. Box 15812, Houston, Texas, 77220. We thank the Lord for you tuning in. Amen. In Jesus' name, and we thank God for those who have pressed their way in. Amen. And those who couldn't make it, amen, due to various reasons and circumstances, I pray the will. Amen. In Jesus' name. And so, <clears throat> of course, you can give me a call, amen, or, you know, write us, amen. If you have any questions, comments, amen, or prayer requests, amen. Praise God. The lines are open in Jesus' name. And so we pray that the Lord, will, amen, bless you and keep you, amen. Hallelujah and bless, amen. To hear us to be the doers of his word. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, because they, <clears throat> amen, because the word is right, amen. And so we're going to conclude. Thank you for tuning in today's message. If you are in or near the Houston area, you are welcome to come and fellowship with us. Our service address is 4204 Highway 6 North, Houston, Texas, 77084, Sundays at 10 a.m. You may call us at 832-360-5812. Our web address is ahcjc.com. May God bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus Christ.